Hello everybody and welcome back. We're going to continue looking at the 2014 Hypatia contest. Uh, we're on to question number three, so how about we take a look at that right now. Alright, here we are. A pyramid, A, B, C, D, E, has a square base and a side length of 20. Uh, vertex E lies on the line perpendicular to the base that passes through F, the center of the base A, B, C, D. Uh, we're told that A, E, or sorry, E, A, E, B, E, C, and E, D all, have, all, all are length 18. Remember, our side length is 20. Okay. Uh, A, determine the surface area of pyramid A, B, C, D, E, including its base. Okay. So if we want to uh, compute the surface area, we're going to have to figure out the areas of each of these four triangles and then add it to the area of the base. Okay. So each of these triangles has base 20 and the other two sides are 18, making them isosceles triangles. So first, our base... We'll just get him out of the way. So the base has the area, an area of 400. How about our triangles? Well, if I wanted to figure out the area of these triangles, I could use a couple things. Uh, one of them, I could use uh, Heron's formula, which gives us the area of the triangle in terms of its side lengths. That's certainly one thing that I could do, and it's not out of the realm of possibility, because remember, this is the grade 11 contest, so Heron's formula uh, is certainly, uh, although it's a more advanced concept, it's certainly something that uh, someone who's very serious uh, with math contests would likely know. However, if this is an isosceles triangle, we can drop this perpendicular, and it splits the base in half. 10 and 10. We'll call the height h. h squared is going to be 18 squared minus 10 squared. Notice we have a right angle triangle with the height here. So that's 324 minus 100. So h is going to be the square root of 224. Is there a way to simplify that? Well, it's got a factor of 4. 224 divided by 4. That's 56. So we can take out the a four square root four and turn that into a two. And 56 also has a factor of four. So in total, we're going to have four times root 14. That's the height of our triangle. And we want the area of this triangle. That's one half base times height, which is 10 times 4 root 14. And we can just say that's 40 root 14. Now we have four of these triangles. And that tells us uh, surface area the area of the base which we know is 400 plus four times the area of the triangles 
So that's 400 plus 4 times 40 root 14. Now we could use a decimal approximation of, of root 14. We could absolutely do that. But if you read the contests carefully, you will know that uh, they want answers as exact as possible. So that's why we leave the square root of 14 in there. Okay? So, further simplifying this, we get 400 plus 4 times 40, that's 160, root 14. Uh, there's no way to take any other factors out of that root 14, so I would say this is likely our final answer. 400 plus 160, root 14. Okay, and that's the surface area of our pyramid. All right, B. Determine the height, EF of the pyramid. Okay. The height EF of the pyramid. Uh, let's draw ourselves a little bit of a picture. I think uh, using Pythagoras' theorem, we could probably figure this out. So let's draw ourselves a nice big picture. So I'm going to have to draw lines on this. And I want there to be enough space so that everything makes sense. And this line here back here is a little too completed, so let's let's dock him up a little bit. Okay. Now we want we have E up here. And we have F, oops, I'll change colors, but in a moment. We have F here. Now we want this height here, EF. That's awful. That is an awful line, and I apologize. Let's see if we can do this. All right, that's as good as we're going to get for a little while. And we already, in our in part A, we figured out this H value here. Okay, we had H here, and we had that that was uh, 4 times root 14. We have these 18s here, we have these 20s here, 20 over here, and this one's here, here's an 18. Okay. Now F lies in the absolute center. So that means each of these lengths is going to be 10. And we're going to get right angles uh, with our length EF. So, we have 10s here and 10s here. So that tells us we, can have, we have a, a right angle triangle. Base 10, height EF, which is what we want, and uh, our length H from the previous problem. Let's call this uh, X. h squared is equal to 10 squared plus x squared, and we can rearrange that. x squared is equal to h squared minus 10 squared, but remember, from a, we know h is 4 root 14. x squared is 4 root 14 squared minus 10 squared. Well, that's going to be 224 minus 100. You can use your calculator if you already forgot what 4 root 14 squared is. So 124. So x is going to be the square root of 124. Now, is there a way to simplify that? Absolutely. 
we get a factor of 4 here. 4 times 31. That's root 4 times root 31. Square root of 4 is 2, so we get 2 root 31. And that's our final answer. So the, the height, therefore EF, has a length of 2 times the square root of 31. 31 is a prime. We can't, uh, can't uh, reduce that anymore. So we're going to be stuck with 2 times root 31. That's okay. Now, last part, C part. This is where we actually need to use our writing. That's okay. So G and H are the midpoints of ED, which is all the way back there, and EA, which is right here. I'm, I smell another large uh, diagram needing to be drawn already. So G and H are the midpoints. Determine the area of quadrilateral B, C, G, H. Okay, uh, so let's, let's draw ourselves a rather large picture so we know exactly what's going on. Okay, so we have A, B, C, we have D down here, we have E, and we have G here, and we have H here. Okay, and the one that we're talking about <coughs> is uh, this quadrilateral. And because these are midpoints, let's label some things here. 20, 20, 18, 9, and 9. 9 and 9. Whole thing's an 18. Uh, we'll be able to show in a moment that this is 10, so I'm going to put that in there. And uh, how about we show that right now? Uh, we know each of these lengths are 9. That's fine. They're half of 18. That makes sense. How do we know this uh, smaller triangle, however, is 10? Well, EGH is going to be similar to... Uh, too hard to see. We could explain this a little more if we wanted to, but I, I, I'm, I'm confident that this is not uh, the hard part of the question. It's not that difficult to see. Uh, but you know, a simple angle argument would work. These two angles have to be the same, and they have to add up to 180 minus the angle at E. Same situation for these angles here, so all these angles are going to be the same. And we'll get similar triangles. So they're similar. What's the ratio? Uh, e H T E A nine to eighteen, which is one to two. That means that G H has a length of one half of D A, one half of twenty, which is ten. Okay. So, 
we now have, uh, we've explained all our labels here. Okay, and again, if you think that this isn't enough explanation as to why it's similar, that it's not clear from the, the midpoints here, uh, it's a quick angle argument. I encourage you to try it for yourself. It's always good to practice those sorts of things. But uh, I would say that once you know the midpoints, that it's clear that everything's going to be half, including the space length. All right. So what do we want to do here? We've got a 10, we've got a 20, and I think we could probably make a symmetry argument that these guys are going to be parallel. We're going to have a trapezoid here. So we have 10, we have 20, BCGH. All right, so let's drop these perpendiculars down here, I and J. And we can easily see that I, J is going to have length 10 in here. Now, if you'll notice, on our pyramid here, uh, we have an incredibly symmetric construction. That is, uh, our positions of G and H, uh, we could sort of draw a, a line, uh, we could draw a mirror through the center of our pyramid, and uh, G and H would be mirrors, mirror images of each other. So that's what we mean by symmetry. That uh, the trapezoid doesn't really know which side is left, which side is right. Doesn't You can't distinguish G and H if you just flip the whole trapezoid over and you get the same result. Is uh, what we mean here when we are using a symmetry argument. So it's not that G and H is sort of skewed over here. It lies directly over top of the center of C and B. And so using that, you can say a symmetry argument like that if you are, uh, if you've drawn enough pictures, if you've noted that the, the, the pyramid itself is symmetrical, 
uh, which it is by its uh, definition of E sitting directly above F, the, the center of the base. So we can make the argument that CI is, has the same length as JB. Okay, and that length is then 5, because that's what's left over. You take out this 20, you've got, uh, you, from this 20, you take out 10, you have 10 left over, so each of these is going to have to be 5. Okay. So if we want to compute the area of this trapezoid, we need the uh, length of the height hj, and then everything is uh, solved. And we're going to call this length, I guess y, and then we'll need this one z. So if only we knew the length of HB, we know that there's a 5 down here, a 5 right here. We can figure out what Y is, and then from that we can use the height of uh, the trapezoid and the uh, formula for the area of the trapezoid to figure out the area of BCGH. So what is Z? Okay, well, we draw our picture once again. So we can find Z by using a little bit of trigonometry. So we can find it by using the cosine law. Okay, so what does the cosine law say? Uh, let's give this guy an actual name, let's say theta. So the uh, cosine law tells us that 20 squared, so using this triangle EBA here, is 18 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 18 times 18 times cos theta. Okay? Cosine law also tells us that using this triangle EBA, z squared is going to be 18 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 9 times 18 times cos theta. Okay. Well, rather nicely, we can rearrange some of this. Call this equation 1 and this equation 2. Uh, we can also substitute some values in here. So rearranging, we get 18 squared plus 18 squared minus 20 squared over 2 times 18 
times 18. All right, well, 3, 2, 4 times 3, 2, 4, or sorry, plus 3, 2, 4, minus 400 is 248. Divide by 2, divide by 18, divide by 18. Uh, it's a little easier if we leave those 18s in here, so let's go with 124. Divided by 18 times 18. Okay, simple enough. So if, plugging, uh, if we plug that into 2, so 1, 2, 4, uh, divided by 18, divided by 18 again. Z squared is going to be 18 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 9 times 18 times cos theta, but we know what cos theta is now. It's 124 or 18, 18. that and that. So we get 18 cancels out with 18 and 2 times 9, that's 18, that cancels out as well. So that's 324 plus 81 minus 124. So that's 200 plus 81. So that's 281. Now, I could square root that and get a value for z, but I'm not going to because all I need to do is remember, I'm trying to use Pythagoras' theorem with z squared, right? It'll be 5 squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. So I don't need to know exactly what z is. I'll just keep z squared the way it is. So z squared is 5 squared plus y squared. So 281 is 25 plus y squared. Well, if we rearrange, y squared is equal to 281 minus 25. And that's going to be, is it really 256? It is. Oh, that's nice. So y is square root of 256. Well, 256 is a square, and it's 16 squared. So y is 16. And then we use our formula for area of the trapezoid. So that means BC GH is one half height, which is Y, times uh, BC plus GH. So that's one half 16, uh, 20 plus 10. So that's going to be 16 times 15. I believe that's 240, but let's just double check. 15 times 16, 240. Great, mental math is going well. So the area of our trapezoid is 240. And we just double check. That's exactly what we were asked to prove to turn the area of quadrilateral. BCGH, we figured out that it was a trapezoid by taking a look at it, okay? Uh, and then from the, the trapezoid, we were able to figure out, okay, um, if we use Pythagoras' theorem in just the right way, we can get the height. We use the cosine law to figure out the, the hypotenuse for our Pythagorean uh, triangle. From there, we got the height of our trapezoid, and we used our trapezoid uh, formula to, to get the, the overall area. So that was a nice little uh, sort of spatial geometry question. We had to, we were working with the, the 3D pyramid. We figured out its surface area. We figured out the height of the pyramid. All of this required uh, 3D spatial reasoning. And especially that last uh, question where we had constructed the trapezoid using parts of the pyramid, uh, we, we definitely had to use uh, sort of 3D reasoning to realize that it was a trapezoid and that there was a symmetry argument in there so that we could... Uh, figure out how to use Pythagoras' theorem to get the height of that trapezoid. 
So uh, very, very involved, but it's, it's very nice to see a, a 3D question. So often you have uh, the basic, basic geometry and circle geometry stuff on, on these contests. But a real 3D question, I think that's, that's excellent. So that's question number three on the, the 2014 Hypatia contest. I think it was an excellent question. And I cannot wait to see question number four. We're going to finish off the contest in the very next video. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, I'll, I'll post uh, question number four shortly. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.